Thanks for joining us on FinPod and our latest edition of What's New at CFI, where we bring you insights from our latest courses and behind the scenes conversations with subject matter experts. Get ahead and stay ahead with the latest from CFI. Hello and welcome to the What's New at CFI podcast. I'm Asim Khan and I'm joined today by my colleague Ryan Spendelo, who's the Vice President of Curriculum at CFI. Ryan, welcome to the podcast. Hi Asim, nice to see you. It's a pleasure to be here. And great to have you. So it, recently you published a course on market risk. That's right. Very exciting. Know, so very exciting, right? I mean, this is just on the heels of a course you published on Basel III and risk management, and now we have the market risk piece. Can you uh, give us some highlights of what the course covers? Yeah, sure. Awesome. Um, so the market risk course, the fundamentals of market risk course, it's our foundational market risk course. And so uh, what we aim to achieve in this particular uh, course is to introduce people to the concept of market risk um, so that they understand exactly what market risk is. Uh, we then look at how market risk is, is measured. And we look at two um, fundamental ways, really, of, of how market risk is measured. Um, we look at the standard deviation of returns of securities, and we particularly focus on the continuously compounded returns, and we talk about why that's uh, particularly appropriate. Um, and we also look at the annualized standard deviations of returns. So we also look at how do we standardize these, um, these returns. Um, and the other thing that we look at in terms of measuring market risk is we look at value at risk. So in this particular course, we, we introduce the concept of value at risk so people can understand exactly what value at risk is. Um, and then we look at a methodology that we can use to calculate uh, value at risk. And we use the parametric approach, which is one of three approaches. Um, and we do that not only for single security positions, uh, like a single equity position, but we also look at how we can calculate value at risk for a simple portfolio, which of course, if you're out as a working as a market risk analyst, this kind of thing is it becomes really crucial. Yeah, and I think you've t um, taken the example of several big money center banks using their balance sheets, um, picking off assets that would present a market risk, and then uh, making your risk calculations around those. So I guess the, the heart of this is this is something that banks have to do, right? Yeah, yeah. every single day. You know, if you're, a, if you're a, a, an investment bank, uh, and you've got trading desks as part of your daily process. And it's an absolutely huge task when you think about how large these trading desks are and um, the size and complexity of the trading desks. Uh, calculating value at risk is something that has to be done uh, on a daily basis. It's a, it's a huge job and it's, um, you know, becomes really important because a lot of, as we discuss in the, in the course, as you allude to, some banks have a lot of exposure to market risk because of their business model. Some banks have less exposure to market risk because of their business model, and so we 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 do explore that as well. So, um, yeah, this is this is a big complex task that banks have to do. And if you're working as a market risk analyst, this course, or if you aspire to work as a market risk analyst, this course gives you a really good insight as to what that might look like. No, sir, it certainly does. So. Um... Could you tell us a little bit about the history of VAR? I remember when it was first being talked about and it, it came into play. Um, why did the industry or regulators, I should say, um, go from just looking at kind of standard measures of volatility to now value at risk or VAR? Yeah, that, that's, an, that's an excellent question. Um, so VAR was a um, was a uh, an approach to measuring market risk that came out yeah, oh gosh, I, I, I'm going to say in the 1980s, the late 80s, by a firm called Risk Metrics, if I recall. Um, mm. People are probably going to Google that and prove me wrong, but um, it was Risk <laughs> Metrics, which I think was then acquired by JP Morgan. Um, and so JP Morgan was actually one of the first um, banks on the street to actually use um, value at risk. And, and the idea about value at risk is, um, is thinking about, well, over a given time period, using some statistical approaches, what's the maximum or what, what loss could we expect with a certain amount of, uh, with a given probability over a certain time period? Um, and that just became a lot more of a robust measure of market risk than say, something like the standard deviations of returns. 
Now, the standard deviations of returns are used in the calculation of parametric VAR as they're used in the two other methods of, of calculating VAR. Um, but regulators soon picked up on the fact that actually um, value at risk is a really um, is, is a better way to quantify a bank's exposure to market risk. Um, we look at the um, when we think about the distribution of returns, the value at risk allows us to look at the the tail, the the loss tail, which is what we want, um, and it allows it allows banks to quantify their market risk exposure. Um, in a very simple way, coming down to basically a number. How much could we lose uh, with a given amount of, uh, with a certain probability over a certain time frame? Um, and from that, banks can then calculate, well, based on this, how much capital do we need to hold in order to protect ourselves from market risk? And, and regulators still uh, soon um, uh, picked up on the robustness and the appropriateness of, of value at risk, and they backed that into the, the Basel Accords. Um, and so you see, value at risk now being calculated by banks like JP Morgan, like Bank of America, like Goldman Sachs, like Wells Fargo, like all the banks around the world, not only for internal management purposes, but also because it's a regulatory requirement. Right. And then in, in, in the case of VAR, I guess where banks are just kind of looking at the very kind of highly stressed scenario, right? Tail risk, as, yeah. as we say. That, yeah. That's right. That's right. Okay, and I think you've done a wonderful job uh, in detailing those calculations in a way that's um, pretty simple to follow. So if anybody's interested in um, learning about you know market risk generally and how the calculations are done, um, please check out Ryan's course. Um, Ryan also, um, you know, we talked a bit offline. Um, this course and Basel three are kind of all going to be part and parcel of an eventual uh, specialization in risk at CFI. Correct. That's right. That's right. Awesome. And really, really exciting. We're, we're working hard to um, uh, develop uh, a number of other risk based courses. And um, sometime in the foreseeable future, we will have a, a risk specialization for our learners. Um, so that's really, really exciting. And, and uh, risk management is such a um, crucial part of the modern banking environment. There's so many fantastic career opportunities for people in risk. Um, uh, so it, it's exciting that CFI can can support people that aspire for that aspire to develop careers in risk. And that we can support that by developing our upcoming risk specialization. Yeah, and it's kind of ironic that the, I think the greatest job stability is probably in risk, right? Because risk does not go away. <laughs> oh, and, and it's just, you know, it gets bigger and bigger and more important. Um, I've been lucky enough to um, to run training programs over the last few years in um, in a few different investment banks. And I, I used to be a classroom trainer, and I've seen these risk programs grow from being kind of like an adjunct to other graduate programs to having being their having their own separate graduate training program chief risk officers often come along and and present to them so yeah there's a lot of really exciting career opportunities for people for finance professionals to develop a, a fantastic career in risk, in risk management Terrific. Well, Ryan, thank you so much for your time today, and uh, we look forward to what else is going to come out um, under the uh, title of Risk and Risk Management, and um, we'll see you next time on the podcast. Fantastic. Thanks, Asim, for having me. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the conversation. FinPod is brought to you by Corporate Finance Institute, the number one rated online provider of finance and banking training, certifications, and productivity tools.